One of the very best things about watching a good horror movie is getting enveloped in suspense. The buildup of tension and then eventual release is accomplished through a myriad of techniques, but one of the best methods is through a what's around the corner moment. These reveals are typically guarded just out of sight, off frame or behind a given object, and are delivered some of the most iconic moments in the horror genre. From reformed attic corpses to cannibal houses caked in a searing tech and Son, the following horror movie moments are all too good to look away from, no matter how much we may internally scream to do just that. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Horror, and here are the 10 best What's Around the Corner horror movie moments. Number 10. Frank Cotton Regenerates in the Attic – Hellraiser Now obviously there are a number of iconic moments in Clive Barker's Hellraiser, chief among which rests the introduction of Doug Bradley's Cinebite leader, the fan-dubbed Pinhead. However, arguably the best moment of suspense and eventual payoff is the rebirth of Sean Chapman's Frank Cotton, who manifests from bodily juices after being torn apart by the Cinebites in the film's opening. Frank's re-emergence is framed excellently by Barker, who by this point in the film has already established the cold, aching, and barren surroundings of the house Frank's old flame Julia, Claire Higgins, has moved into. Slowly fading to the attic, the floorboards begin to creak and rumble until eventually Frank's skeletal musculature emerges piece by piece. It's a stunning, juicy effect, with the gnarly coup de grace coming when Frank's final column fuses itself to his partially regenerated brain. Number 9. Hallway Jump Scare – The Exorcist 3 Although it could be argued that The Exorcist 3 is yet to receive its flowers properly, there is one scene that has gone down in horror infamy for having what could be the greatest jump scare ever. The scene in question comes at the tail end of the film's second act, with the once-dead Gemini killer in the full swing of his homecoming rampage. Lieutenant Kinderman, George C. Scott, has narrowed down the Gemini's movements to Georgetown Hospital, but has so far proven unable to prevent the bloodshed. It is one particular moment of bloodshed that marks the most shocking moment in The Exorcist 3. William Peter Blatty puts on a masterclass in suspense for the scene, which lasts for almost five minutes and focuses on the nurse and the nightly hospital routine, the former checking various rooms while security just kind of shuffles about. All throughout, the camera is rooted to the end of the hallway, with numerous doors and corners hiding the potential for danger. Blatty produces a fake-out scare to disarm, only to follow it up an excruciating minute later with a shot of pale death bursting from a room thought secure. Number 8. Satan Reaches Through the Mirror – Prince of Darkness Tonally in keeping with John Carpenter's more widely lauded remake of The Thing, Prince of Darkness prophesizes doom in every frame, peeling back our dimension to reveal a voidless horror from which there is no escape. The film sees a team of scientists summoned to an old monastery in Los Angeles where they uncover the corporeal liquid form of Satan, a cosmic threat humanity was initially alerted to by an alien Jesus Christ. Satan slowly musters his powers over the course of the film, eventually possessing one of the scientists, Kelly, who attempts to summon their father, referred to as the Anti-God, through a mirror. The prior possession sequence and Kelly's makeup are terrifying in and of themselves, but Carpenter conjures true existential dread once Kelly reaches through that mirror. On the other side is an unending blackness, through which Satan attempts to pull through the monstrous, gigantic mitt of Father Dearest. Old Scratch is ultimately unsuccessful, but even in that moment of victory, Prince of Darkness produces its most terrifying image. A brave but doomed Catherine, having forced Kelly through to the other side, reaching out as the last vestiges of light are vanquished and the portal is shattered. Number 7. Damien's Real Mother – The Omen For me, the peak of The Omen's horror occurs during its middle third, when Gregory Peggs, Robert Thorne, and David Warner's Keith Jennings are in the thralls of their investigation. Having travelled to Italy, where Thorne was previously stationed as a diplomat and where Damien was born, the duo unearth a series of unsettling discoveries that eventually lead them to a graveyard in the Italian countryside. Opening two graves should finally give Thorne the answer he seeks who Damien's real mother is, and what became of his actual son. The build-up to and actual act of this discovery is the omen's finest hour. Jerry Goldsmith's score swells, Jennings and Thorne peel back the greystone of Damien's real mother and reveal the carcass of a jackal. 
It's a morbid discovery, but David Seltzer's script leaves the worst one for last. Thorn, now desperately clinging to the hope that his real child might be alive, opens the other gravestone, revealing the skeleton of a baby with a gaping head wound. His baby. Number 6. The Bedroom Confrontation Suspiria Dario Argento Suspiria is ethereal horror at its best. A neon, woozy nightmare that strips your strength away and imparts vulnerability in every scene. Almost every sequence in the film acts as a moment of unsettling discovery, as Jessica Harper's Susie Banyan uncovers the unsettling secrets of her German dance school. Suspiria is chock full with legitimately terrifying sequences. However, the most unnerving moments of discovery occur in the final act, where Susie, equipped with the knowledge of the witch known as Helena Marcos, ventures into the headmistress's bedroom. Now, now, that in itself makes for a pretty scary what's around the corner moment, but it's immediately trumped by the following bit where Marcos reanimates the corpse of Sarah, who emerges from a door with a knife in hand. It's truly unsettling imagery, prefaced by the slow turning of the door handle and the hand grasping the very edge of the frame. Number 5. The Stairs Scene Psycho the way Alfred Hitchcock layers mystery and suspense in Psycho is something to behold, but it is the moments where that tension explodes that have attained immortal status. The shower scene, a cheap example. There are two other moments in the film that play with the dread of what's lurking out of frame, the reveal of Norma Bates' corpse in the finale, and the stairs scene where Martin Balsam's Arbogast is murdered by Mother, which, to me, will always be Psycho's greatest moment. From the moment Arbogast steps foot inside the house overlooking the Bates' motel, Hitchcock makes it clear that he is not long for this world. Danger is hinted at behind every locked door and every obscured surface, and yet Arbogast is compelled upward, further into the web Mother has woven. A door slowly inches open, with a partial shadow leaking from behind. Arbogast has no time to react as Mother springs forward and slashes him across the face, leading to the detective plummeting down the steps to his eventual doom. Shot with an inspired use of rear projection to sell the sense of disorientation and backwards momentum, this sequence is one of Hitchcock's most magical. Number 4. A Shape in the Darkness Halloween. With the original Halloween, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill created the definitive horror movie villain, a character grounded in real-world terror, but with enough supernatural connotations that they would embody the very idea of evil itself. There was no explaining Michael Myers. Evil exists in the world, and therefore, the shape does too. He moves in and out of shadows like a ghost, but like evil itself, he is fundamentally human and so too is the terror he exacts. No scene better exemplifies this than when Laurie Strode investigates the Wallace's house and discovers Annie, Linda, and Bob's corpses. With Laurie backed into a corner, the ghostly face of death emerges slowly from inky nothingness, embodying all the earthly and spiritual terror of the shape in one lingering moment. Number 3. Karis meets Reagan, the Exorcist there comes a point in William Friedkin's The Exorcist where almost every other scene becomes a what's around the corner moment. As Reagan's possession takes hold, she begins to deteriorate at an increasing scale. The sudden outbursts in the beginning of the film escalate into violent convulsions and attacks until, eventually, the innocent child we know gives way to rotting skin, pea green vomit, and the growling tones of Mercedes McCambridge. It is this version of Reagan we meet once her mother Chris pleads with Father Karras to perform an exorcism. Still unconvinced but moved by Chris's pleas, Karis heads to the McNeil house and moves slowly up the stairs to Reagan's bedroom. It's a masterful moment in a film full of masterful moments, with Friedkin wielding tension, anguish, and fear in equal measure as Karis moves up the stairs and swings open the door. The scene on the other side is far from pleasant. Reagan, caked in vomit and with open wounds, lies restrained on the bed, the room's temperature at an icy chill. Karis, still skeptical, is visibly repulsed, and yet must find it within himself to look past the extraordinary and try to converse with the devil in Reagan's body. Number 2. The Derelict Alien Ridley Scott's Alien is the ultimate in existential terror, something that is made immediately apparent through its excellent opening title sequence and then amplified again through a submersive opening few scenes. Set scenes see the crew of the Nostromo respond to a beacon from a nearby planetoid, with Scott packing in plenty of suspense as they round corner after corner and encounter a derelict spacecraft, the famed space jockey, and, of course, that terrifying xenomorph 
North Egg Chamber. The secret ingredient to this smorgasbord of terror is Alien's incredible set design and VFX work. H.R. Geiger developed a unique visual language for the film that lent itself perfectly to Dan O'Bannon's screenplay and Scott's direction, lending a distinct organic terror to space as opposed to the mechanical motifs of earlier space horrors like War of the Worlds. This in itself signals a primordial kind of dread that we're even smaller in the vast infinite depths of the universe than we can ever really comprehend. And number one, Leatherface's introduction, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The back end of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a delirious waking hell in which Marilyn Burns' Sally Hardesty is tortured by and then escapes from the Sawyer family in an incredible moment of catharsis. Before that though, the film almost revels in its lack of motive. Several interactions serve as a portent to Sally and her friends his ultimate fates, but each event is spontaneous, abrupt, and soon vanquished from memory. What they do, though, is lay the groundwork for Texas Chainsaw's most abrupt moment of horror, one that crystallizes its central motif with a crushing hammer blow to the head. After looking for a place to go swimming, Kirk and Pam discover a house with a gas generator that could be used to get their van on its way. They approach the house from the rear, which, while in a slight state of decay, doesn't seem incredibly ominous. Anxieties are further laid to rest when they reach the front of the house, which is gleaming white, complete with a swing chair and a neatly trimmed lawn. Approaching the door and getting no reply from the occupants, Kirk cautiously lets himself into a dark, drafty interior, a blood-red room adorned with skulls, the lone source of color. Toby Hooper lingers on this moment of trepidation expertly, framing the red room at a distance and then cutting back closer as Kirk approaches. We know what nothing good is behind there, and yet that rift is soon crossed. Kirk jogs forward, trips, and out of the red comes Leatherface bearing down with so much menace it's almost impossible to process. The sequence is maneuvered expertly by Hooper, opening the reveal with the camera at a disarming distance before switching to a high-angle shot of Kirk's bewilderment and then a low-angle zoom as Leatherface raises the hammer over our heads. The weapon comes down, Kirk twitches, the metal door slams shut. In a moment, life was there and then it wasn't. And that was our list. Let me know your favorite around the corner horror movie moments down in the comments below and don't forget to drop the video a like if you enjoyed it. Either way, I've been Ewan, thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully catch you next time. Bye!